So this is a fail. I accidentally pressed down on the legs when I soldered it, pushed it out without noticing it. I could now remove the solder and just push it in again, but I'm not gonna do that. Hello and welcome to The Sound Test Room. My name is Jakob Hack, I'm your host, and you're watching a Hack Attack DIY electronics episode. We are going to keep on building on the um, Echo Base delay unit right here. I'll fill in all of the um, resistors and that episode, you can go watch that if you haven't. And if you're completely new to this series and new to DIY electronics, then I suggest you go and watch this episode telling you about the basic tools you need to start building. I've put uh, some paper here and there because I realized I was scratching the uh, board uh, with these jaws. Today we are going to put in some capacitors. So we've got boxed metal film capacitors and we've got electrolytic capacitors. These ones are ceramic capacitors. Ceramic ones and these box ones, they can go in either way, but the electrolytic ones, they have a plus side and they have a minus side. What I'm gonna do is fill this thing with capacitors. And if you've seen the episode where I'm putting in the resistors, you know how to do this. You put them in, you go around, you bend the legs so they stay in place when you solder them. So this is what it looks like when you put in all of the uh, 100 NF capacitors. You can see where they go on the board through this screen print here. The thing is, it can be so very confusing with capacitors. You need to actually read up a bit about how that works with the markings and stuff. Some capacitors are marked in a certain way and some are marked in another way. So these ones are marked U1J63. 63 is actually the voltage, so these guys can take 63 volts. And J is the tolerance. Uh, in this case, I think it's five percent. U1 actually means 0.1 microfarads and that's UF. But in NF, nanofarads, it's 100. And this is so confusing, especially for someone like me. I can't hold numbers in my head. I actually had to Google this again. I've done this quite a few times, uh, believe me, over the past 10 years, but I, I still, this, this stuff won't stick in my head. All right, I'm gonna start soldering these before it gets too cluttered with legs on the board. It is so important that you clean your tip of your soldering iron in between solderings because there might be contaminations or stuff on your components when you've touched them or other things. There are ways you can clean your components, but I'm not gonna go, go into that right now. And oh, when you're using paper like this to <clears throat> keep your circuit board from being scratched, make sure you don't hit the paper with your soldering iron because it will start burning. Look at that. It's starting to look like a little city. I love that. I did make a mistake back when I started soldering this with the first episode with the resistors because I usually start with the smallest or lowest, uh, the components that have the lowest profile against the board that aren't that high, doesn't stick up as much. And it's actually these things I should have started with. As you can see, they're much smaller than uh, resistors. These are diodes. And if you look closely, you can see that it's marked with a white line the way you should put them. So the black line you see on the component itself goes in the same way as the white line right here. The white line on the first one is pointing towards the left. So the black line is supposed to go towards the left like that. Okay, so the black line is pointing towards the right now and the white line is also pointing towards the right so can't get it in properly because I didn't bend it properly so I need to grab it again. Ah, oh, let's just do this. I managed to get them in so now I'm gonna turn it around and solder it before they pop out. So this is a fail. I accidentally pressed down on the legs when I soldered it, pushed it out without noticing it. I could now remove the solder and just push it in again, but you know, I'm not gonna do that. If you do this, make sure that the components are sticking against the uh, board and not doing like this. Now it's placed right behind a uh, cap and so it's kind of shielded. So nothing's gonna really happen with it, but this is a fail. Don't do it like that. 
I've clipped off all of the legs on the uh, capacitors and the two diodes, including the failed one. So now it's not that cluttered underneath. What I want to show you now is actually putting in these ones, the electrolytic ones. These have polarity. As you can see, this one has got a light gray stripe across it right there with a little minus sign. So one leg is minus and it's the shorter leg and the long leg is the plus side. Now look at the board right here. As you can see, there's a plus sign right where the plus leg goes. So make sure that the minus side is turned away from it. So the longer leg into the plus side. So here we are. This is how far I've come and well, I've kind of run out of a few components. I've ordered them and I'm going to have to wait for those before I can continue. And I've also ordered the pots for this and I've chosen a type that is PCB mounted. And that means you mount them directly on the board because I'm actually going to design a panel for this and have it made by a panel making company. You'll be able to follow me through the process of me actually actually designing the panel and ordering it. So there's still lots to do with this. And I hope this is inspiring you enough to go make something or maybe build one of these yourself. As usual, Doug Woods, Colin Sweeney and me, Jakob Hackett, soundtrisdrum.com, which is you, a very productive week. Now go finger your components and have a lot of fun doing it.